So I was on social media last night and I made a comment on a YouTube post and I didn't think it was that funny. I don't know. It was something to do with YouTube algorithms and somebody replied to what I said along the lines of I was really goofy or something like that. And at first I was a little offended. I was like, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't think it was very goofy, but the more I think about it. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm pretty goofy. Maybe that should be a compliment. I don't know, but this video, <laughs> speaking of goofy, it's kind of set in my mind all about being a goofy, goofy goober. Oh, I'm a goofy goober, yeah. And I'm calling all of you bubble blowing babies to come along with me and let's do the bubble sort. Hey! Who blew this bubble? Before we start, though, check out this t-shirt my kids got me while we were on vacation. Ah, speaking of Goofy, ah, look at all the funny horses. They all look like my horse. Well, I don't have her anymore, but my old horse, Zoe, she looked just like this one. And they all have the blaze. I didn't have a blue horse. And this horse here, I'm not sure what's going on there. But it's so cute! Okay, let's go! Bubble sort swaps elements in a list until the largest element in the list is placed at the greatest index, or in other words, at the very last spot in the array. As you can see in these slides here, the largest number kind of bubbles up. If that may, that, I mean, it makes total sense, right? Bubbles up through the list until it's at the very end. And I don't, I don't know. What did you think when you heard the term bubble sort? I'm really sure. I wasn't thinking like actual bubbles, bubbles. I was thinking like more like it would, I don't know, pairs. I don't know what I was thinking, but the bubble sort is just that. It bubbles up through swapping. And as with most algorithms for sorting, there is swapping involved. In this case, the swapping has to happen over several iterations and not just one. And we're gonna go over that now. Oh, okay, I had to go get a sweatshirt on. It's kinda cold in here, I don't know why. Actually, I just got a, I don't know, alert on my phone that said it was freezing. Oh. To begin, I don't really wanna make this video super long. So we're going to talk about the optimized bubble sort and the unoptimized bubble sort. I have seen quite a few people on here do the unoptimized version. And so when I saw them doing it, I was always like, ooh. Because <laughs> I watch everybody. I watch all kinds of uh, Python channels and I like to see how other people do their programs and compare them to mine. And I'm all about learning how to do everything. That means we're going to look at the difference between the optimized and the unoptimized. And I'm gonna tell you right now that the unoptimized actually doubles the iterations that have to happen in order to return the sorted array. All right, let's get coding. Oh, it looks like it got a little dark outside. Not only is it freezing, it's gonna rain. Okay, but we're, we're coding, we're programming. We're gonna have fun even though it's cold outside and I'm really excited to do this. All right, let's get coding. This is going to the, we're going to talk about the unoptimized version first and I learned a really cool trick we could put this in, in the visualizer, but we're going to utilize this little trick that I learned. And it will show you that the number of iterations on the unoptimized version is actually double the optimized version. So first, let's do the unoptimized. And I've seen uh, a few videos that use the unoptimized version, and it's longer. Nobody likes longer code. Well, I don't know. Some people like that. I don't like longer code. So we're going to utilize two functions. We're going to do the swap 
first, which is going to take three parameters, which is swap, and we're going to do index one, index oops, two, and this is where we come up with the temp and oops, ah, bracket index one, and then a index one gets reassigned to a index two and then a index two becomes the temp again okay no, i was kidding i have to quit being so sour over things <laughs> this me being goofy now, oops, we come up with our second function, which we're gonna call bubble optimize. Right. And this is only gonna take our Bruh. array. The neat little trick is we're going to count our iterations. So let's make our iterations counter. Obviously we have to start at zero and we need two for loops because on the first pass, it's only gonna take our largest number up to the end, but anything inside the array that's not sorted isn't going to get sorted so we need a second for loop as many passes as it's going to take to sort the array right for i in a we're going to iterate over every element and then on our next for loop for j in the range len of a minus one we do not need to go to the very last number in our array because we already know that the largest number is at the end so we don't need that one we just need to go to the second to the last number in the array hopefully that makes sense and we can start counting our iterations here iterate now we're gonna start counting our iterations. There's our counter. And right now, this is our conditional statement. If a j, the one to the left, is greater than the one to the right, u plus one. This is where we call our swap function we're going to swap it with a j j plus 1. Now remember, this is the unoptimized version. It looks pretty sleek, but and now we can just return now we can just return our array. We're going to return our array first and then we're going to look at the iterations. So Actually, yeah, no, let's just do that. We're going to print our bubble optimized. A, let's run it. Looks good. There it is, right there. Okay, let's return our iterations. All right, let's see if we can just return it on the same line. See what happens. There we go. Okay, as you can see here at the very uh, bottom. There was 72 iterations. This is our unoptimized version. Let's go to the optimized version so that you can see the difference. And I think you're going to like it. Hey there. If you made it this far and enjoy what you're seeing, why not subscribe? I upload fresh content all the time. Thanks for watching. For the optimized version, I'm going to keep the code that we were already working on we're just going to make like, I think three changes to the code. And the first thing we need to, that we can do is take out this one function here. We can take out the swap. Oh, I wrote bubble optimized. <laughs> that should have been unoptimized. Okay. So <laughs> who's a goofy goober? Yeah. I'm a total goofy goober. All right. Okay, we'll make bubble optimized part two. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Idiot. Who's texting me? Just my husband texting me while he's on his lunch break. All right. Well, what were we doing? Okay. Uh, we need to change our first for loop to do it in the range of the one of A. <laughs> this is our next big uh, problem. We're going to iterate down. Let's see here. We need to iterate down. It's I minus one, I think. I think that's it. But if that's not it, then we're going to redo this. Okay. So instead of this, taking this function out, this is where we just need to swap the code itself so we're just going to copy this and put it in here like that and we need to change this to a comma and swappy swap swap and then take this copy this out and then put that in there behind it all right let's 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 see this okay i knew that wasn't going to I should have known that wasn't going to be right. Um, it, uh, it's probably I minus one. All right, let's try that. Ow! <sighs> inner piece, inner piece. Think that I like laying. Line of A minus I minus one. <laughs> okay, nothing worked. <laughs> it didn't do anything. There were zero iterations. Okay, what the freak am I doing wrong here? Let's figure this out. Let's figure this out together. Uh, for I in range, length of A. No, that's right. For J in range, length of I. Oh, okay. We don't need the comma. It's just the length of A minus I minus one. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And look at that. Half the iterations by just simply implementing the swap within one single formula, not utilizing two formulas. Therefore, here is the more optimized formula right here. This is it. Well, I really hope that this video was helpful to you. I liked the elimination. A lot of people put, um, I don't, I don't know what they would call that fail safe. I don't, I don't know. Make it more optimized by putting bools in it, like swapped equals false. And then when it's, when that condition is met, then the swapping happens and then you can turn the swap into true. You can use those if you want to. I feel like that's a little bit more confusing. I suppose making sure that certain conditions are met in order for the code to run better just to take in all those, I don't know what you call it, like base cases. I, I guess you're covering all those things. I'm not tackling that in this video. I just wanted to show you the little trick on the iterations and counting the number of those and an unoptimized version of bubble sort and then the optimized version of bubble sort. At any rate, I'm super glad you were able to join me today and I would love to hear feedback from you guys. I would love to know how you approach this problem, what you thought about when you were uh, faced with the bubble sort. And if you haven't watched my other video on the insertion sort, please go do that. I'd love to hear your feedback on that as well. And that's it. So until next time, happy coding. Bye.